All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast. John Duncan here, and of course, I'm joined as always with my co-hosts, Darian Smith and Jimmy Marion. And guys, UAB 2024 AAC Basketball Champions. UAB is going freaking dancing. March Madness, here we come this Friday, San Diego State. But before we get into recapping this uh, Temple game in the AAC Championship, this episode and all episodes of the Blazer Victory Podcast are sponsored by Cahaba Brewing Company. And guys, we're just blown away. Even today for the AAC Championship, we had a lot of folks come to Cahaba Brewing Company to the tap room to have a watch party with us. That, you know, Elizabeth was telling me, like, I didn't realize we did that three days in a row and we had hundreds of people come in. And a, a few of them all three days. Like, that is so mm-hmm. awesome. So much fun fellowshipping with fellow Blazer fans and just having a good time and watching the game. And we will definitely continue that uh, next Friday or this upcoming Friday for the NCAA tournament. So make plans 1245 p.m. Friday, San Diego State, Cava Brewing Company. We'll be there. Excited. But, guys. It's what 10, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, but let's freaking go, baby. I said it again. Hey, AAC champions get the auto bid into the tournament. Now they're going to send our ass up to Spokane, Washington. <laughs> hey, uh, we are freaking in the dance, baby. Let's they go. They sent the whole state of Alabama up to Spokane, Washington, though. <laughs> We're going to be on the same flight as Alabama and Auburn. Hey, poor Sanford getting left out, man. They that's had to right. go. Yeah, that's the only team that got left out. But hey, <laughs> shout out. Look. It's such a great time for basketball in the state of Alabama. And I know we don't talk about those other programs, but, you know, Sanford, to have UAB, Sanford, Alabama, and Auburn in the big dance, I think for the first time ever, somebody's mm-hmm. going to get me on that. But that is well, Sanford's so only awesome. made it. Sanford's only made it like two other times in their program yeah. history. I think it was like 99 and 2000. Yeah, so it's like 25 is. years. Yeah. yeah. So awesome, awesome. But, Jimmy, just – What are just your initial thoughts? Oh, and and again, thank you to Cahaba Brewing Company again. You know, they've been so good to us at the Blazer Victory Podcast, and we can't wait to, you know, host many more watch parties. But, Jimmy, just what was just your initial takeaway from this AAC championship game uh, as UAB beats Temple? Man, I'm going back to last night when we were just sitting here, and I was just praying. I was like, please, Lord, let us win this game. I was in a good mood this morning on my run, and I was like, I got good vibes. You know who else had good vibes today was UAB because UAB played a phenomenal game really from start to finish. There were some stretches there in the second half where, you know, me, I'm complaining. Oh, no, the lead's cut to 15. It's cut to 13. We're in a conference championship game. We're leading by 16 at the half. We were up by double digits. UAB was in control. How often can you partake in a conference championship game like we did here and feel relatively comfortable? I mean, that was my first thought was, again, just thank you, Lord. The guys balled out. It was good team basketball, 19 assists. UAB in their wins this season is averaging, I think, somewhere around 13, 14 assists today, or excuse me, a game. And uh, they were just zipping the ball around. I know we're going to talk about individual guys here in a second, but it all starts with what A.J. Vasquez did. That man came out, and he was on fire he was just killing it. I mean, we started outside today at Cahaba, John, and we're out there and we're watching on the screen and you couldn't blink before you just saw AJ hit another three, one for one, two for two, three for three, all the way to five for five. And he had just UAB off to a tremendous start. And thankfully down the stretch, UAB was able to hold on, but just awesome game by UAB. Feel so blessed to be able to partake in that uh, event today with the fellas and with the UAB fans of Blazer Victory podcast listeners. And hopefully this is just the continued momentum that UAB needs to make some noise as we go forward in March and we go dancing, baby. Yeah, we're going dancing, baby. It's uh, it's cool. I want everybody, when you listen to it, you're going to work, um, whatever you're doing, just, just take this moment in. Like, we'll... We'll worry about San Diego State, but this team has accomplished a lot and should be proud of themselves. Like, as fans, we should be proud. It was a little iffiness going on during those losses, but the, we kind of emphasized, like, hey, the tournament is what matters now, right? The AAC tournament. And 
you can still build to get there. I think the color commentators uh, today did a real good job of speaking about developing players. And he talked about it on the Temple side, too. Just like sometimes it takes the season. We have a lot of raw guys coming from Juco. And everybody knows Christian, Christian Coleman's story. You know, they talked about it a lot. We know Yax. Is Where'd he work sport. again, Darren? Where'd he work? Man, he worked down general? at like Costco's or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, like he was just a mechanic somewhere or something. Yeah. Like, they, um, you know, we, we know that he was relatively new to basketball and so was Yax. And those are two of our best players on the team, you know, and um, well, Yax being the best, but not to rank the guys or anything like that, but he was the tournament MVP. I mean, in the in the defensive player of the year, first first team all conference. So, I mean, whatever. But with that being said, it's like they emphasized developing players. And a lot of times we was wondering, like, man, why is it come, coming together? Like, we was having these high moments, low moments, high. We ended up starting Christian Coleman in the tournament. That didn't happen until the tournament. You know, so as you are developing these players and as they are growing, the coaches have to put them in position as well. It all has to come together. Like, and everybody found their role. I say, like, even a guy like Ortiz, he wasn't much of a defensive player, you know, when he first started. The, the guy is scrappy. Look at Eric Gaines now. His game, his confidence when he shoots, you can tell. You know, I said, um, you know, I was looking around the house today. And then I just start hearing stuff and I just got on the ground and I got in the in the position. I'm like, is that a tornado? And then I realized it was just AJ Vasquez bombing away. And Stop. I, and I <laughs> you know, and you know, like, and this is a guy that just got ejected. And for him to come back that way after after posting such a classy message to the fans, um, and how you know what's symbol a symbolic of their growth as well. It's how interactive the guys have gotten with the fans, whether that's on the court after the games, how they interact or on social media and how they have just bought in into this like Blazer family. Like they really embrace us and we embrace them. And you can tell that they feel the effects of that. So um, I'm just really proud of the guys. I just all that soliloquy I just did was just to really for us to taking this moment and be proud because we had some lows. We had a couple of lows during the season. Um, we had the Andy Kennedy ejection at Memphis. Like we've, we've had some moments, right? And, and it shows you something about the character of this team, the character of this coach and the coaching staff, um, all the history Andy Kennedy has made here. And to keep fighting, we had some, Moments during the home crowd, that, uh, during the ho- home games where the home crowd wasn't as packed, student sections not there. They're there. This game, oh, the general, the, the the general crowd didn't show up. There's no energy. Like it's super dead. Like they had to fight through all of that, all of that. So, I, 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 I as I tweeted, what what is sunshine without rain? You will never know how it feels to be on this side. If you don't go through those moments, if you don't grow through those moments. And I feel like this team has really, really grown up during those tough moments. A lot of teams can't say that. Shout out to Temple. That's another team. I feel like they they scrapped to be where they are. Nothing but respect for Tem- for Temple, for me. Nothing but re- no. It's not like Memphis. Just total class. I respect those guys. So shout out to our guys fighting through adversity, growing growing and developing through adversity and it, it, it all was worth it when i heard yaks afterwards say man this is the best moment of my life that's what he said he, i never thought that i would be here like i just came from juco a kid that was just played like a couple of games and now i'm here i'm the tournament uh the tournament mvp i'm he was just so appreciative and th- those are the moments that as Blazer fans, no matter what happens going forward, this is a moment to be proud of and we should remember. Definitely. And, you know, speaking back on Vasquez, too, you know, did you see where Jelly tweeted? It's just something about that number 10 in March for UAB. Just, hey, something special. 
Did you also hear what AK, he was joking with him about the soft punch that he threw? No, what did he say? Yeah, this is on the, this is on the post game. Uh, he, the post game press or whatever. He said that he thought that AJ might need to get his New York state driver's license pulled because that was a soft punch that he, <laughs> that he threw against Wichita State. AK is just savage, man. That dude has some love funny it. ass quotes. <laughs> love it, love it. And I mean, speaking of AK, this is like the most, yeah, most post game afterwards. He's still like tough on the guys, like, yeah, eh, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it was all right, but you can tell he really took this moment. He was just like, I think this is probably the first time I heard him afterwards. Like, I'm just so proud of these guys, man. He's usually just like, he's like a tough dad, you know, like, ah, they was out. Okay. Don't, I don't like all that figure skating that easy. Nah, he really took this moment to, I I love that. You know, he took the moment to really heap praise on them and say, Hey man, this team is special. They fall through it. I'm like, there we go. I knew I knew AK felt that way the whole time. <laughs> I knew he felt that way the whole time. I understand being the coach and having to just be tough. And but he always showed up on social media, but just to hear him say it post game, that was pretty cool. I love it. And hey, we I think we need to talk about the this a compliment accomplishments that AK has done. You know, we just talk, started talking about it before we recorded 101 wins at UAB. How many t- four 20 plus win seasons? Um, he's gotten postseason every year. You know, I mean, he's just a legend. Like Wait, three out of those four years, he's made it to a. Well, let me say it this way: he's made it to either a conference championship yeah, game. This, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. So three of those seasons, I guess, it's three conference championship appearances, right? Mm-hmm. But then also, he's got the NIT championship appearance too. I mean, so he's just taking UAB to heights in which. He talks about all the time about playing meaningful basketball in March, and UAB is certainly seeing that here the last several seasons. Yeah, and that fourth year though, like he made it to the semis. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there was that the he loss did. to Western Kentucky. Hey, yeah, I mean the man like just knows loss. how to. He just knows how to win in March, and I, I think a lot of UAB fans and people just take it for granted. So hey, shout out AK. Hey, we we appreciate you on the Blizz Victory Podcast. Yeah. Hey. You got to pay that man. Pay, pay that, that man. Pay, pay that, that man. man. Pay. And hopefully he he is he is coming back next year. Let's just hopefully he is coming back next year, and the whole gang is coming back because the only person leaving is JD. The whole gang is coming back along with AK, and if that happens, dog, our home crowd. I don't want to hear no excuses. We we have a. We would be returning a tournament team, uh, AAC championship tournament team. No, there's no excuses. We have the best player in the AAC. The best player. I don't care. Nobody says he's the best player. Nobody puts up double doubles and play defense like this. Come on, man. Let's let's just stop. Let's stop it. You know. So I I would expect, and I know this is just for another podcast, but. That the stands better be rocking next year, and I hope it plays out that way. Definitely, and guys, I mean, just going back to this game, I mean, UAB did what they were supposed to against a good Temple team. This was not the same Temple team that UAB beat by 28 just what 10 days ago or whatever it was. This um, is point saving Temple. No, <laughs> it was a. <laughs> it's not point shaving temple. Yeah, I mean, hey, and they come out. They came out hard um, early on, and I was like, oh, we might, we might have a, a game with these guys. But hey, shout out to the guys, defensively speaking, uh, really sound. Um, temple looked tired, as the team would probably look tired playing their fifth uh, day, fifth five games, are playing their fifth game in five days. So hey, I want to brag out. though, like I, I get it, but like FA, you didn't do this to them. Charlotte didn't do this to them. Those teams that were ranked higher than UAB in the regular season in our own conference. I know it was the fifth game in five days. It was UAB's third game in three days, but that Temple team was hot and they were playing lockdown defense, like team ball. Their coach had them believing. And for UAB to come out and be up at 16 and a half and lead that game is just mighty impressive, man. Yeah, I love Miller. I see him Miller. That was our guy we highlighted. He still did his thing. But, you know, before I get into everything else, 
And I know we had AJ Vasquez going crazy. I know Yak still did his double double thing, but let me. I'm finna start another. He's gonna make me start another segment called Eric Gaines Impact Award, right? Eric Gaines again, all over this game. Five steals, five of them, three blocks, nine assists, six rebounds to go along with 15 points. That is, come on, man. That's just, I'm, listen, I used to be one of the guys that used to be like kind of a a detractor because his game wasn't controlled, right? It was just kind of all over, high turnovers, forcing shots. Now he settled into this role to where he's just like, oh, I can do a little bit of that. I can throw a little bit of this on here, a little bit of Parmesan, a little bit of garlic pepper, a little bit of salt. Like he he just mixes it. I, I love because that's winning basketball. Every coach in the nation, every coach in the nation would be fond of a player that can get into the passing lanes. He can get in there and get some rebounds. He can get some blocks as a guard. He can shoot a couple threes. He can get to the rim, get some and ones. Oh, wait, he's going to control your offense for you and get you seven or eight or six. Come on, man. Like, I want us to really, really take notice of that and appreciate that and appreciate the growth in EG. Like, people were so quick to jump on him, but let's give him all the praise. I think he's been the most impactful all-around player for us this whole tournament. Darren, you've been you've been talking about the contributions of our guards throughout this AAC tournament. You just read the stats for EG there in today's ball game. During this AAC tournament, he averaged 15 points, five boards, seven assists, and four steals a game. I mean, that's just nasty, right? And and here's a guy, Eric Gaines. I think some people uh, early in the non-con were they had high expectations of EG, and deservedly so. You know, defensively stealing the ball um, and leading this offense, and he played good. He he's not he wasn't playing where he is right now because he's peaking right now at the right time. Uh, but even looking at his three point shooting, because we know that last year he did he was in the thirty percentile, thirty um, percent ish range, but a large part of the season he was you know not shooting uh, at the level that I bet that he would wish. But look back at Wichita State, he went 0 for 4. Had a couple of, of misses in that ball game, but he responded over the next two games by going 5 of 11 uh, from 3, including 3 of 6 today. I mean, those are big-time makes, step-back makes. He had clutch makes late in the ball game. Uh, and one thing I really want to call out about him, too, was Eric Gaines in these three games in the AAC tournament, 21 assists, 5 turnovers. That guy had the ball in his hands a lot. Teams are pressuring him in this ball team. And for him to do that in this tournament. Played 38 minutes today. 38. Hella nice. And and we've been talking about in this tournament, UAB limiting the turnovers. He is not the only reason, but he is the reason capital T. Capital T-H-E. He's really just controlled to go back to what Darren was saying. And so just love the growth we've seen from him. Uh, and love the way that he's playing ball right now because we know EG likes to play on big uh, big stage. It was only a couple of years ago who got that chase down block and, and went to be Mr. Instagram. I think it was against Iowa State, whoever it was, when he was at LSU. Uh, funny, by the way, that uh, EG left LSU. They're in the NIT uh, facing, is it North Texas, I think? Uh, and he's at UAB playing in the NCAA tournament. So shout out to UAB. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, and then another thing I wanted to point out was the other day we talked about what Temple might try to do in order to defend this UAB team. And as you as you can recall, it's so funny because even AK said it at halftime. He was like, they packing it in in the zone, you know. And we figured, we kind of knew that was going to happen. In the beginning, they kind of limited Yaks. They devoted a lot of resources towards Yaks. They was big on crowding him and you can tell it was a uh, in the game plan to be body on body on him with Hoffman because you can't really handle his athleticism or height but they really tried to body him and uh, devote a lot of resources to Coleman and and Yaks on the inside in the beginning but guess what we had AJ Vasquez you can't mm. and we talked about shot making when we said hey 
they're going to be packing it in. We're going to have some open shots, e.g. But Vasquez just went crazy like butter. We had our guys, and they were shooting that rock. And then once once we, once the three ball was flowing, I knew the game was over with. There was there's nothing they couldn't. What can you now? You're going to have to come out and play these guys, and then we start eating on the inside with Christian Coleman and Yaks, and, and you saw it all start coming together. And uh, you know, here here over you know BBP, we kind of know a little bit about ball. We watched the game. We kind of knew what they was going to try to do. And, you know, that's just like we played that's church league. Point. Just listen we played church league ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we sure did. Game. We know how to look at it. You know, we knew what they was gonna do. AK agreed at halftime with BVP, right? That's what they was gonna try to do. Guess what? We made shots, we hit the outside perimeter shots. They couldn't do nothing about it. It was game. I knew it was over with. John, can we can we talk a little bit about Christian Coleman? What what do you think about? Because oh I want to I want to toss this yeah. over to Darian because I know Darian. Darian was one of the first of us that was kind of seeing was Christian Coleman. Yeah. He was like, "Hey, this is the trajectory is up." So I just want I just want us to talk about that guy for a second because what he has done over this like last five or six game stretch. Darian mentioned that he started today, but let's give that guy some shine real quick. What what did you think? And what what was your impression of CC over these last few games, John? Oh my God! Critical, like we we said heading into critical this call. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not gonna talk about Walmart either. But hey, <laughs> shout out Christian Coleman. I mean, the guy's playing on fire. He makes dunk after dunk, aggressiveness, yes. getting rebounds, many boards. Like we just love to play, watch him play. And shout out to AK for starting him in this tournament. You know, I yeah. thought that was huge. So, yeah, ho- hopefully he keeps up. We're going to need him against San Diego State and against those big guys. Um, but, hey, shout out Christian Coleman. Man, I I just love his game, man. And I know Darian was first. Um, Darian, do you have anything else to add with uh, Christian Coleman? Yeah, I want to tee, I want to tee Darian up. Okay. That's six straight games in double figures. And – in these in these last three, he's 20 of 35. It's 57 percent from the field. And I wrote on here highlight dunk after highlight dunk. That's the thing for me, Darren. Like we know what he does to opposing defenses by just with his quick feet and attacking those bigs. Like it's just he's so versatile. Like in the open court, uh, the way that him and Yaks play together, like it's so awesome. And we've seen him stretch the floor from that you know mid range game that he's got before. And we know that he can block shots and the the havoc that he caused at the top of because that was what we saw earlier in the year, right? We saw the potential with him at the top of the one three one. And uh, you know, it was really him learning how to finish through contact, in my opinion, uh, as the season went on and feel comfortable stretching out a little bit. But now it's like he is just like rim running and like he's getting put back dunks. And like he's talking trash and getting teed up. Like he's just like that like meter of like favorite player. Like Yaks has our hearts. But it's like every game I just want to love Christian Coleman more and more and more. But you you were on it first, Darian. So I just thought we need to share that share some love with him. Yeah, he's a guy that I you can you can always see the potential in the guy. You saw the tools there, right? He was a guy earlier that was just struggling to find his role. Where you got to find your spots and you got to get comfortable, right? Like anybody, when they sit down in the chair, they kind of fidget around a little bit. You know, you got to find that spot. Oh, there it is. Oh, you might be knocked out in a little bit. And that's kind of where he settled in. He, he settled into his spot. So I, the way that he unlocks the team, all right? So the difference between him and JD, JD's game is JD's game. If you play football, if I'm – You know, if Tom Brady just had Randy Moss and that's the only guy he could throw FAU, they had that one receiver. (laughs) I forgot. I forgot that that one receiver. LeJonte Webbs. LeJonte Webbs. Yes. If we if we could have, I would have preferred us just shut him down, devote resources. And I promise you that quarterback would have looked very different. Right. And it's kind of like. JD's a specialized game to where you have to kind of move the pieces around to fit around him to make it work for everybody. And that's no knock against JD because what he brings is valuable, but it's just not versatile. It's impactful, but it's not versatile. That way you can you can game plan around it. Christian Coleman, look at all his look at all the different ways he scores. Half the time he's going to be running in transition. 
and dunking from like the free throw line. He's quick. He's fast. It might it's going to be a couple putbacks. He's going to have a mid range or two in there. He's going to have a couple free throws if you make them, but he's going to have a couple free throws. And then sometimes he's going to attack those bigs because they're flat footed. He's going to attack them one on one. And sometimes he does that from the three point line. Right. He uses quickness. He may post up a little guy. All that to say is his confidence and knowing his spots like, oh, shoot, I can I can get a bucket off this. Like, he's looking for the ball. He did not do that early in the year. Almost like he was scared. He was like, oh, let me throw it, throw it, just throwing it up. Now he's seeking contact. He's going up strong. He's getting putbacks. He's talking noise. The versatility unlocks everybody. I think that for everybody's game, it, it really, really helps. So now, now you don't know where this one guy is going to be because he's everywhere. He's freaking – he's, he's like – Inspector Gadget arms is that go go gadget, just arms and stuff everywhere. So I think it's almost like it's a new UAB team. I can't really explain it, but this is not the same team. And um, if I'm correct, we have a, a pretty decent shot of winning against San Diego State with this version of the team. I think we can do it. So uh, I'm just happy that we have this new team. Shout out to Andy Kennedy for having the cojones to go with this lineup. And uh, I think it's going to take our ceiling that much higher. I need I need one of our listeners to crop Christian Coleman in one of these pictures of a Walmart employee in the blue vest. <laughs> Be like employee of the month. We're going we're gonna to make our player of the game the employee of the month. Just put, hey, just, just put him in it. different different jobs. They, I feel yeah. like they just talk about <laughs> stuff. Just like have him as like a, a, a dog walker. Uh, hey, Christian, <laughs> Christian Coleman over the la- in the month of March has been UAB basketball's employee of the month. Shout out to Christian Coleman. <laughs> there you go. There put you put go. him in an OSHA vest. Like, just put him in different <laughs> insurance. Working on a like, forklift. We can, yeah. we can do it all. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, all right, guys. Uh, we, we probably need to wrap though. Again, you UAB. We're tired, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we're we're talking. To, yeah, we're, we're tired. It's about eleven o'clock or ten, ten thirty. So eighty five, sixty nine. UAB gets it done. 2023-2024 AAC conference Let's champions. Go. Yeah. Oh, okay. I hate when people say AAC conference. It's AAC champions because it's American Athletic mm-hmm. Conference. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw an Just official account get that me. wrong the other day. Just yeah. Say you hate me. I don't hate you, bro. I love you. You said you hate me. Well, I love peaceful. you. I love you. I love you. We I'll, love each other at BBP. John hates me, guys. <laughs> I say AAC conference. I'm sorry. Guys. We're the champions. Who cares? We're the champions, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We can say what we want. Yeah, we can say what we want to. So. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, hey, again. And I probably I, I need to stop saying hell. I think that that's a cuss word, right? Yeah, I probably should be saying that on the free. I've said that a couple times. But anyway, UAB it's gets like it done. It's like a rated PG cuss word. You can say that. Disney movies say it, right? I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, you good, bro? They say that in church. <laughs> they say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Eighty-five, sixty-nine. UAB led by as many as twenty-six. Never looked back. Temple didn't lead in the ball game. This Friday, UAB will take on. Is, is the 12 seed. They'll take on the five seed, San Diego State, 1245 Friday. We hope to see everyone there at Cahaba Brewing Company. Hey, I heard some people went over to the Buffalo Wild Wings. At Cahaba Brewing Company, every TV was on the UAB game. We had a blast right. all three days. Like, if you want to go to a restaurant, and I'm not, no, I, I like Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, I like wings. But if you want to go somewhere and just have one TV out of like 50 TVs on the UAB game, hey, fine by me. Hey, but, that that blood orange though too. The ooh, blood orange. The hits blood the spot. orange blonde is I so. I fell good. in love with the blood orange this weekend. John, did, you just, <laughs> did you just drop a diss track right here? Did you? <laughs> well, I don't know because I hate I, I I love Buffalo Wild Wings, but I don't know. It's just not a watch party environment. You know you know what I'm saying? Like, like if I'm I, a, it's like if you had a daughter. It's like. I love this kid, but I don't love you with my kid. You know, I love yeah, this guy, yeah. but I don't just not with my daughter. Just you know? It don't mix well. Yeah, it don't, yeah hey, let's, I let's stay separate say. lanes. Yeah, I definitely. I'm on the yeah. same wavelength. I got you. <laughs> well, guys, we'll be back probably Wednesday. We're gonna take a, we're gonna take a break, guys. We hope that you have enjoyed this AAC tournament special. We, 
this is what our third year doing it. Like we love doing these. Like it's just what fifteen. Now we're going to like thirty minutes today, but it's a championship. It's worth it. It's you know, worth we're, it. We're the champions, yeah. But we hope that hey, if you want to go back and rewatch every all these all four episodes, go do it. Shout out our YouTube channel. Subscribe to us at Blazer Pod if you have not already. If you're listening in the audio version, click the link in your description to go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube so you can see our beautiful faces. But Jimmy, let's go ahead and send it out until Wednesday as we get ready for San Diego State. We're champions, baby. Go Blazers.